Odessa Piper does an unusual first course from Wisconsin. It's the classic Italian cookie, biscotti, with savory overtones including herbs, nuts, and a wedge of lake cedar cheese. Scott Boswell prepares the main course at New Orleans, grilled veal loin with a four-tiered potato galette stuffed with chanterelle and lobster mushrooms. Finally, from New York, Antoine Bouterin presents his version of pound cake containing apples, dried lavender, and orange zest. It's served with homemade applesauce. The appetizer takes us to Madison, Wisconsin, and Odessa Piper's classy L'Etoile. In French, that is star, which she is where media attention is concerned. She's been featured in Gourmet, Bon Appetit, Food and Wine, and Wine Spectator. Her first course is an apricot biscotti served with Wisconsin cheese. I've got some room temperature butter and I'm going to just cream it with sugar, get it really fluffy. This will make my biscotti really light. I use a uh, low water content butter, European style butter for baking. I highly recommend it. As the butter is softening, I'm just going to add that sugar gradually and lighten it up. I'm going for really, really fluffy butter. I like a biscotti that's very, very delicate. Five eggs are added, one at a time. I use beautiful organic eggs. I love these. They've got a deep, rich yolk. Chickens are really healthy, and you can really see it in the egg. The shells are really firm. I'm just going to work these eggs in one at a time and just go for really, really fluffy batter. I learned a long time ago never to break eggs directly into your mixing bowl. You never know when a bit of shell is going to get in there. After all the eggs are added, a quarter cup of vinegar goes in. When the, when the eggs are mixed into the butter, I'm going to add a quarter cup of fruit vinegar. I recommend a nice fruity vinegar that will match the uh, fruit level in the biscotti recipe. Fresh herbs, including the unusual hyssop with a slightly bitter minty flavor. If I use the, the leaves in their entirety, it's a bit too much. And this is the anise hyssop plant that I get the leaves from. I actually asked my farmers to bring it in before the plant has uh, flowered and gotten quite this mature. You can also use the anise hyssop flowers uh, and throw those into the biscotti batter as well if you have a helper or the patience. Apricots, which were soaked in a Riesling wine the day before, are sliced into fairly large pieces. Other fruits that work really well are poached pears, or apples, dried reconstituted cherries and cranberries, that combination is awesome. Another combination I love to do is dried blueberries with candied lavender. The apricot pieces are coated with flour before going into the biscotti batter. I like to lightly toast the anise seed. Brings out a great flavor. Also, a little bit of pre-toast on the nuts. With my pistachio nuts, I take great effort to toast them up to get the raw flavor out, but I really like to have that beautiful green color. I find toasting at about 325 degrees is best. Uh, you can get the raw flavor cooked out, but you can still keep your color. As regards leavening, um, I don't care for the taste of uh, baking powder. I'm sensitive to it. I think a lot of people are. We don't like that aluminum flavor that so I also use a fair amount of baking soda. I'm actually going to add the flour pretty quickly and mix it till it's just incorporated. I've added twice and you can see it's just barely incorporated and now I'm going to add the balance. And even as this is doing its final mix-in 
before it's even completely mixed, I'm going to add my fruit and the julienne hyssop and mint so that I can just keep that mixing time down to an absolute minimum. This dough is supposed to be kind of wet, moist, but in order to shape it, um, using the flour on this surface to help me. And I'm going to take this one the length of a half pan. Bake it 350 for 25 minutes. We get this cheese from Mary Falk in uh, Love Tree Farm up in northern Wisconsin. She calls this cheese Trade Lake Cedar because she ages it on cedar boughs. When it comes shipped to us, it actually arrives with all this straw. So we keep it that way um, and keep it just lightly wrapped while we're using it. I'm going to pair the cheese with the hyssop biscotti and some fresh apricots. I've got the glossate apricots in the biscotti. <clears throat> all right. We've taken the cheese and we've tempered it at room temperature for a couple hours just so that it's really coming up with all of its perfume and its sweetness and its nuance, which you can't really get if it's taken too cold from the refrigerator. And my particular preference with biscotti is actually not to toast it because I, I like all the flavors to come through and I really enjoy the moistness. So I'm just going to set that in and keep this one really simple. Some of the hyssop that we used in the biscotti fresh hyssop, and then we'll just add these beautiful apricots from up in Door County, still kind of north, where a lot of stone fruits grow really well. I think we got ourselves a cheese plate. Trade Lake Cedar, Door County apricots, and anise hyssop, and apricot biscotti. The restaurant Stella in New Orleans French Quarter is the domain of Louisiana native Scott Boswell. After graduation from the CIA, he used a template embraced by numerous young American chefs. He went to Europe and worked in France and Italy. Here is grilled veal loin with mushroom potato galette. All right, right here we have a beautiful veal loin. It's already been, it's already been trimmed out. And it's Silver skin has been removed. We want to cut like two four ounce medallions. I'm going to take a little olive oil. Too much. A little salt, kosher salt and a little fresh black pepper. You may not have a French grill in your house, but you can use a regular grill. I just like to use this because it's really hot and really fast. It gives really good marks. A little more olive oil. Well, not too long. I just want to get that nice grill flavor on there. You'll do both sides. Using a mandolin, a large potato is julienned for the potato galette. That should be good. I'm going to take these and put them in water to release some of that excess starch. They'll brown better and cook more evenly. Generous amount of clarified butter. 
You don't really have to drain these too much. Just want to let the excess fall out. Let's go straight into the pan. Be careful. And a little more. While that's rolling, we can also get our sauce. Sliced shallots go into clarified butter. I just want to sweat those out and get a little bit. Kind of move this, make sure it doesn't stick, even though it is Teflon, sometimes it will. And we're using today because these are in season right now. We have mushrooms from Washington State. I have today chanterelles and lobster mushrooms. And you know, the bigger ones you can cut, they're so pretty, you don't want to do too much to them. Same with the lobster. We're going to cook these separately. We're going to brown the shallots a little bit. We're going to come in with some calvados. Careful, it's going to fire. A little more. I'm going to let that reduce a little bit. Also, come with a little bit of cream. Not too much. Let that reduce a little bit. On the potato, we're going to add a little bit of whole butter around the edges. This will help it brown. Well, this is reduced pretty down, so we're going to. I have a reduced veal stock here. You can call it demi gloss. The lobster mushroom pieces are sautéed in butter. You don't want to burn the butter. You just want it to start turning brown. You'll actually smell a nutty aroma. And that flavor will be picked up in the mushrooms. Mushrooms are good about picking up flavor, whatever you cook in there. See how it just turns brown? We're going to go in with the lobster. The beautiful lobster mushrooms. Add a little bit more butter to our potato galette. The mushrooms are ready. You want them just to get tender. You don't want to overcook them. A little bit of brown caramelization. Put them onto a sheet pan. Or you can let them cool. I'm going to use this same liquid to go with my chanterelles, the butter, and the Actually, the lobster mushrooms put off a little bit of oil, too. It's a great flavor. The chanterelles, a little salt. And we're going to let these cool, too. I'm going to take this. Cut it in half. This our mushrooms. Make a nice little layer of lobster and chanterelle. A little bit of Reggiano Parmesan cheese. Fresh scallion tops. Three more layers are added and the galette goes into the oven to remove some of the fat. Using a serrated knife, the galette is cut into quarters, leading to presentation. An assortment of baby vegetables is presented. Take one medallion here. 
guy here. Calvados reduction. This is good, so you want to give them a good little bit of it. All the way around the plate. Touch of extra virgin olive oil. Voila. Restaurant Bouterin is the culmination of a 25-year-old dream of owner chef Antoine Bouterin. He apprenticed and trained in France, then worked in Paris before coming to the U.S., where he cooked for over a decade at Le Perigord. From his namesake, he prepares a heady version of pound cake with lavender and apple. The chef enumerates his ingredients. During this demonstration, Marc Cosnard de Closet will translate. Uh, Un petit peu de lavande, Some des lavender. oranges confites, mais ça c'est facultatif. Some candy des oranges, oranges. That's un petit peu de Some baking, powder. Some baking, powder. Some baking powder, et le moule qui sera and coloré et légèrement fariné. Donc on va mettre un peu de beurre et un peu de beurre. Donc first we take the Là, eggs. Je vais faire, euh, apparemment la recette est pour 3 œufs, mais je vais en mettre 6. So parce que recipe. We're going to put six eggs because we have a large. I have a large mold. I want to make a big cake. So we'll start with six eggs. Six oeufs. I'm going to put a cup of sugar. It's very important. You should put the sugar and the eggs in the whole and mix it, but not too thick, compared to a lot of other recipes. So here we want to mix the eggs and the sugar, but we don't want to lighten the eggs too much. This is a grandmother's country cake. It's very simple. Then we add our cup of all-purpose flour, which has been sifted. And I leave a little bit of flour at the end that we used to um, flour the mold. And we keep mixing until the flour is well mixed. Keep stirring. Now we add some melted butter. About three large cups. Three large uh, spoonfuls. Tablespoons. Unsalted butter. Now we add a touch of baking powder. So maintenant je vais rappeler un petit peu d'orange, un petit peu de jus d'orange. Un petit peu de orange zest. Apparemment presque la moitié d'une orange. About half of the zest of an orange. So, mélanger ça. Je vais ajouter une petite cuillère de lavande, une cuillère de lavande séchée. A tablespoon of dried lavender flowers. I'm using Granny Smith apples. I use Rome Beauty or Golden Delicious. And we quarter them. I put the apples in there. So here I'm using a Kuga half mold. You can use a round one. Put some butter on it first. Quelquefois, il est bien de le sucrer aussi, mais je pense qu'il est mieux de le faire parce que quand on sucre, c'est quelquefois ça colle au fond du mot. Si on le met du sucre, ça va se caramélier et se mettre au bas du mot. Donc, je mets un petit peu de farine. Je mets un petit peu de farine. Je termine bien le tour du moule. Voilà. Et ensuite, tout 
simplement, je mets le contenu dans le mur. Et dans le mur. Le mettre au four. Now put it in the oven. Pendant, c'est un gâteau qui cuit très vite, uh, said, donc uh, à peu près de 25 à 30 minutes. So 25 to 30 plus, minutes, not more. Et than that. à une température de 400 uh, degrés, entre 350 et, 3, et 400 degrés. Between 350 de, and 400 degrees. Okay. Fahrenheit, depending on your uh, oven. Okay. So we're going to put the little. Confection and sugar. So I'm going to cut a little piece. And I like to present that very simple with a little maybe a bunch of rosemary, few little stamp of lavender, and uh, a little fresh applesauce, and that's it.